Um, good morning, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving us the privilege to show our results of um, high volume, many million ways of uh, aortic valve replacement via a mini stenotomy to end the debate that's just been going on. So we're going to look at one technique and see how well we can do it. Okay. The advantages for us doing this against the gold standard of conventional aortic valve replacements are the following, and this has been shown by various publications that I've listed here, and this is, there are a lot more publications that are going to show you more advantages, such as the need for pain relief, reduced need for blood and blood product transfusion, reduced incidence of respiratory complications, intensive care and hospital stay, as well as wound infections. These are only some of the advantages. So what we wanted, so what is the problem with this? Sometimes during surgery, when you have unforeseen events that happen during surgery, you do need to convert. And when that happens, uh, the incidence is about 3% as reported in the literature, and that's based on these 17 studies currently available in the literature. What happens when you do convert? This is probably the largest study that's been published uh, from the Brigham Group. There's over 1,000 patients, or about 1,000 patients. In the patients who do not convert, their mortality is about 1.7%, and when you do convert, a third of the patients died. That is a pretty high-risk strategy. So what we wanted to do was look at our experience, look at the outcomes of patients undergoing uh, mini stenotomy aortic valve replacement at our center, and it's a single high-volume surgical team, and then look at our outcomes of the patients we did convert in. The data was always collected prospectively, uh, and the study group in this case for, it starts from 2005, because from 2005 onwards, all comers, respective etiology, who require an isolated aortic valve replacement, underwent a mini stenotomy aortic valve replacement. So we only had to compare with a historical group before that period, and all the data and the outcomes were analyzed. Our preferred technique and a very well standardized technique which we also teach on an internationally uh, recognized course is before or after we drape the or just before we drape the patient and prep the patient we do a trans thoracic echo on table identify the right atrial appendage and mark it this usually is between the third and the fourth space we then make a, a four to five centimeter skin incision and uh, perform an upper J stenotomy into the marked space appropriately to reach the right atrial appendage. And then we always use central cannulation. We've never used peripheral cannulation because we always find that it's much easier and safer. And all our cases are done at 35 degrees and following an oblique uh, aortotomy. We only use transiotic venting because we find that's much easier. And then we implant the valve using interrupted stitches uh, Plagiated or non plagiated depending on the size of the valve. And then the de airing again is uh, aided by TOE. The standard aortic uh, uh, um, valve replacement through a stenotomy is uh, pretty much the same valve implantation technique. The only difference is we use a right superior pulmonary vein vent. Over the seven year period, we did 247 mini stenotomy aortic valve replacements compared to a historical group of 198. Uh, open or standard aortic valve replacements. There was no difference in our mean group, mean age, or there was no difference in the cross climb times, which are pretty comparable, of 52 and 72 for the mini AVR and 54 and 69 for the standard AVR. And the most important difference, or the only difference we found in the entire study, that a third of these are performed by trainees. And uh, when I was working as a professor, and within my first six months, I was doing mini AVR. So it's a perfectly reproducible technique. Only in four patients we converted during surgery to a full stenotomy, which gives us an incidence of 1.6%. And the reasons for doing that, one was to replace the ascending aorta. This was a patient with a bicuspid aortic valve or the non-dilated aorta, but the aorta was extremely fragile, and no matter what we did, we could not control the bleeding. So we chose wisely to open and uh, replace the ascending aorta, and the patient went home on day six. Another one was right ventricular bleeding from a uh, very difficult to access pacing wire uh, site. So we converted, had to put one stitch in, 
and there was no problem. Patient also went home on day five, six. The other one was we had to perform coronary bypass grafting because this was a, an elderly lady with a very small root and following on to the previous discussion, we did put a 90 millimeter valve and there was coronary obstruction when it came off bypass, so we had to graft it. Another one, very early in the experience, was failure to cardiovert because um, we just couldn't get the paddles in and the external pads did not work on that day. So that all we had to do is open the chest, cardiovert, and close as normal. And our results, there was no difference in the post-operative blood loss. Two patients underwent restonotomy for bleeding. And this was very early in our experience, and we've not had any further restonotomy for bleedings. Uh, one patient in either group underwent, uh, had sternal wound infection. The, the one person who underwent uh, who developed sternal wound infection was somebody with an immunosuppressant therapy, fanclogan spondylitis. And there were, no, there were no strokes in either group, no pa pacemakers for the mini AVR at least. The median IT stay was one day. And I'm not giving you the mean because there is a range, of course. And the median hospital stay is about six days. One patient died in the mini AVR group, and this was from uh, pacing wire removal induced stamponade on day six. Um, so based on this, possibly the U largest UK experience, we conclude that mini AVR can be performed with excellent results and a very low conversion rate without compromising safety or mobility and training can be achieved with excellent reproducibility of results. Thank you.